Now, if you think that Wall Street has problems now, just consider this. Today marks the 81st anniversary of the beginning of the 1929 stock market crash and the stock market panic that would help usher in the Great Depression. Now, my next guest is a student of Wall Street history as well as a participant. Muriel Siebert was the first ever woman on the New York Stock Exchange Board and is also a former New York State Banking Superintendent. I want to welcome Muriel Siebert, Chairman and President of Siebert & Company. Muriel Great. Siebert, great to have you with us. Great to be here. Now, you've recently talked about how one of the biggest obstacles that we have to getting the economy going hasn't to do with interest rates, doesn't have to do with corporate earnings, has to do with politics. What do you mean? We have partisan hatred today. If you turn on television and you watch it, they're knocking each other very hard. Now, the election will be over next Tuesday. I don't know who's going to win, and I wish everybody good luck. But when it happens, we will then know who controls the House, who controls the Senate, who's won in the different states. And I think the country needs a bipartisan commission or group of people appointed that are not active in the day-to-day -day running of politics that can analyze where is our country today. I know we're slipping education-wise. We've slipped terribly. We know that China, for example, if you read today's paper, has developed a computer that's much faster than our fastest computer. We have to make sure that we stay number one in technology. Otherwise, we're all going to be working at minimum wages. We're not going to have what we've had. And we have to look at this, approach it, and do something. We must change our education. We're slipping. In China, they go to school, I am told, 12 months a year. I'm not saying that we should change it unless it would prove to be beneficial. But we cannot have younger people. Look at the jobs that one person, Bill Gates, created. Do we have other Bill Gates that are there? They're on the edge of discovering something, of developing something in drugs or medicines or technology. If we do, how can we help it? Take a look at Rochester in our state. We used to have, we still have it, the headquarters of Xerox, Polaroid, and Eastman Kodak. Now, children graduate from Rochester Institute of Technology. They move out of the state because there are no jobs. Why can't we have incubators when you have these new ideas? These kids are smart today. That, and why can't we have incubators that help develop these, pro these new products? So we can stay number one. But do you think that it's going to take a crisis to bring the country, as you describe it, bring at least the nonpartisan politicians or experts together and actually formulate some kind of plan? Because it seems as though we've already gone through a crisis. And when you compare it, let's say, to what we went through in the Great Depression, that spurred some kind of consensus, as contentious as it was. But is there going to need to be another crisis in order to get the kind of consensus that you're describing? We're going through it now. I grew up in Cleveland, Ohio. When I was there, you saw the steel plants, and they were spouting the fire, and you saw the activity there. You had automobile parts companies that were grinding out things. The Midwest is in trouble. They have a crisis. There are no jobs. We have to make sure there are jobs and that people work. And maybe we made some serious mistakes. Maybe we should have given out contracts that would repair the roads. It used to be we'd go to Europe and we'd look at the condition of their roads and we'd say, oh, isn't that terrible? Now they come here and it's our roads that need the help.
Do you think that we're going to get something like an infrastructure bank out of Washington? Felix Roatan from Lazard, he's been talking about having some kind of government backing for bonds that would then finance infrastructure re uh, refurbishment and development in the U.S. Look, we don't need a government. Maybe we do it if, if, it, if we require it to make it happen, then we need it. If we find that there's enough money and there's enough bright people downtown to find how we can sell it without making it government financing, we should do it that way. But we must develop the new technology. We must stay number one or there will be no jobs for people. And I don't want to see that happen. Some sobering thoughts. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Muriel Siebert from Siebert & Company.